friends. Good. Anybody on Zoom? Hello, Zoomers. Anybody on Zoom here for the first time? Just kind of wave to each other. And I never know where to look. Brother Eric, am I looking up or am I looking down? I'm looking here. Okay. Hi, everyone. We were all Zoomers for a very long time, so it's really refreshing to see you in person and to be here together. So our theme for the month has been counting blessings, and we've talked about it for a few weeks now. And tonight, we have Sister Anjani, who is the coordinator here for Harmony House. She lives here, just returned from California, and she's uh, got a little um, throat problem, but she will be here, and we'll see how long she can last, and uh, we'll see if anyone needs to pinch hit for her, but I hope she can because she's a beautiful, beautiful soul, and you'll learn a lot from her about true gratitude and the responsibility. You know, the topic for tonight is gratitude and responsibility. And I didn't know quite how to put those two together myself until I realized that this afternoon, I spent the afternoon um, helping editing a student's college essay. And the student, God bless Zoom, <laughs> student lives in uh, Virginia. And uh, he has slight autism, slight, so slight. His SAT scores are 730 and 800, which is 800 is the top score. He has an A plus average, but it's a social kind of anxiety that's very slight. And he suffered when he was younger in elementary school in seventh grade. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that by reading his rough drafts, it brought me to tears. And I'm thinking how tonight, if I don't know how to talk about responsibility and gratitude, after work, after working for about three hours this afternoon on this boy's essays, he went from a seventh grader who had terrible social anxiety, very uncomfortable in his own skin, to the sophomore, he's now a senior, to the sophomore who was able to, and he has so many interests, he's very artistic and dance and theater and music, and he wants to be an astrophysicist. He's really what we'd call a Renaissance gentleman. But I spent the whole afternoon uh, editing essays that showed how he was able to turn his anxious, social anxiety personality into something that he was able to control by 10th grade. And he said, you know, it doesn't feel like the real me. I said, well, the real you isn't the one with the anxiety, is it? We learned that here. The real us didn't have anxiety lifetimes ago. And when you're 18 now, when you're 28 or 38, of course, you will have formed new habits. He formed new habits. And here's what happened. He was with a group, a troupe of actors in Once Upon a Mattress or something. And um, he decided to go over, even though he had a major part with the uh, ensemble players. You know, and he wound up bringing those groups together and showing one how to dance a certain step. And in the process, and this is where I teared up reading his rough draft, he was able for the first time in his life to forget about the voice inside his head that was always looking for, how am I doing? Should I say that? Should the critic. And he wrote that it was the first time in his life he had ever felt that free. And I started to water up, read it to my husband. He started to water up. And all of a sudden, what happened was the human spirit rising up off the page. And my responsibility, he doesn't write that well. I'll tell you the truth. He should stay with the sciences, you know. But my responsibility is to creatively edit everything he said, suggest certain things to him, but my responsibility goes beyond editing the grammar in an essay. So when the topic tonight coincidentally was gratitude and responsibility, the joy in my heart when I can help a kid who's got the goods, he's got the grades, if I can help a kid get into the school that he wants, and I've been doing this for decades, it's a joy, it's a pleasure 
that is what we call unlimited happiness. And ironically, if you see all the decorations around here today, and I don't know if you noticed the uh, carpeted floor by the desk in the lobby where we have the Tolly and the blessing cards, it's all decorated. Do you know what the holiday is in India? They're celebrating Diwali, which is spelled Diwali, and I never know how to quite say it, but it's a festival of lights. Guess what it's a celebration of? Not just Lakshmi and the goddess of prosperity and all that. It's the celebration of the human ability to rise above light over darkness, to be able to lift yourself up out of the ashes and that human spirit that no surgeon can find if he cuts open your head. The part of you that we believe very strongly, we know for us, lives on when it's done, you know? So it's a lovely holiday and we're, I'm celebrating it all afternoon, even though I'm not of Indian descent as far as I know in this birth. And uh, we're here to celebrate tonight to hear what Sister Anjani has to say about gratitude and responsibility. So Sister Anjani, here you are with your little cup of water, welcome. And you've been studying Raj Yoga for 40 yesterday and, and 39 and 364 other days, right? Well, welcome tonight. Last time you were here, we had a beautiful, beautiful time. So thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Sister Louise. Om Shanti and a good evening and a warm evening. And heartfelt feelings of welcome to each and every one. I think we have some new faces tonight. Is that right? Have you been here before? Yeah. Let me see how many are coming for the first time. Welcome. Welcome. So we're exploring tonight gratitude and responsibility. And these are qualities that we find that is so necessary today. It's as though the world is in great need of these qualities, in great need. It's as though you can't find them easily around. It's there to a certain degree, but then it gets lost. And it gets lost in different ways. And so when we look at gratitude, Thanksgiving is coming up, right? It's a time that everyone says, let me give thanks. But we feel every day is Thanksgiving for us. Every day of our lives, we should be expressing this quality of gratitude and also being responsible. Because when I thought about this topic of gratitude and responsibility, it seems like two different sides of the coin, right? But if I don't have a sense of this deep feeling of what I am receiving and what I have in my life and seeing it, I wouldn't want to give it. Like Luis was sharing her beautiful story. She has the speciality. She has the qualities. She has it in her life. So she's very grateful for it. And then what happens? You take the responsibility to share it, to serve others with that. And so where does this all start? Where does it begin? It begins with ourselves. How much do I have that appreciation and gratitude towards myself? Yeah. We could be criticizing ourselves from the moment we wake up in the morning until we go to sleep. Oh, I did this. This should not be like this, 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 this. And we go on about, you know, or we complain to others. And so life goes on with all this energy around us. But well, what is it that I need to do to myself? 
for myself. And that's where I wake up in the morning and first I feel very thankful. And the first one I thank is myself for being present, for being aware, for being alert. And then I say good morning to God. So it's an awareness of the being, awareness of the soul, awareness of the light, awareness of it's a new beautiful day. And then I say good morning to God, which bonds me and creates this beautiful feeling of this relationship. Then when I step out of the house, here is Mother Nature the cool breeze, the air that the body receives, and we can go on with all the things that we're using for the body. Am I consciously aware of what I'm receiving? You know, we have so much. We shouldn't even have one thought that I don't have or I need. If we look in the world today, it's a world that will tell us, will talk to us and say to, to us, please don't complain. Please don't say that you don't have or you need. But be happy and be contented that whatever it is that I'm having, let me express that feeling of gratitude. That what I have in my life is what I need. It doesn't mean that you don't earn more or you don't do the things that you have to do when you sit back and say, let it all be like this. No, you continue to do, but what's the state of mind? What is the state of my feelings? What is the experience do I go through the day with in terms of my feelings to myself of that gratitude. Because if I keep seeing externally, I will find that all these desires will be like a shadow that I'm chasing. Can we catch our shadows? It's running in front. And so I have to just shift with the light and then there is no more shadows. And so that's the consciousness that I just make a shift internally and start appreciating, start seeing what you have and be from the heart, express gratitude for it. You know, I remember um, someone who had a very serious accident and then I shared with her and I said, while you're lying here and you can't move, every day write 10 things you're grateful for. 10 things that you're grateful for. And she started that every day she would write 10 things. And in whole life, Think of a hundred things that you're grateful for and make a note of that. Write all those things. And so what that did to her, it gave her a lot of strength to connect with herself and see that I have abundance, which I wasn't seeing before. I wasn't noticing before. So you start appreciating the person who comes in to clean the floor. You start appreciating the person who will come and take care of your body because you can't take care of it. Someone brings you some food. Someone takes, gives you a bath. Someone does this. I mean, you will find that people will be in that same situation and keep complaining giving themselves a hard time and giving others a hard time. 
But just this fact that I can see what I have and appreciate it, it changes our whole thinking. It changes our whole perception of life. Because there is a lot. If I have to ask each one of you today, what are you grateful for? Can you tell me one thing of today? Shout it out. One thing, yeah. Anyone. Just say today, what is that one thing that you feel? Sorry? You woke up. Okay. All right. What else? Sorry? You got here by yourself, or else you would have needed someone to bring you. Okay, you got here. Yes. Keep on sharing. Breathing. This breath, every second, I keep breathing oxygen. I keep breathing in the air. And we help the plants with our carbon monoxide. So there, our breathing, our breath. What else? What else are you grateful? There isn't anything that happened today. You lived the whole day. Huh? Nothing bad happened today. You met someone, you talked to this person, the family I'm living in, I'm so grateful to have such a family. Because who else will care for me? Sometimes we run low on gas in our own self, soul and body. Whom do you turn to? I go to my family. And my family says, okay, come. But when I do come in, then how do I respond with responsibility? Because the arms could open very big and welcome me. But I also have a responsibility to that one who has allowed me into their lives. And so think about it. Think from the morning you wake up, how many things can I go through the day? Someone just to listen to what I have in my life that is maybe difficult. I need some, some guidance. And someone took the time and the patience to listen to me. Not question of complaining but just to listen that this is where I'm stuck in life at school those who are going to school your teachers so grateful for those who are in that position to help you to guide you through so that you can learn more you can become more smart more brilliant right? your workplace Right? So everyone, there's so many people actually who touches our lives. So many, so many. You could be going to the supermarket. Someone just smile at you. Or you smile at someone. Sometimes we wait for others to smile at us. But how about us smiling at them? Yeah. So this quality has to do with the giving and receiving. It's not about only what I get, but it's what do I respond back to. And that's also my responsibility. My responsibility is not that I only receive all the time. Someone is kind to me, and yes, that person is supposed to be kind to me. Sometimes children take parents for granted thinks that this is how parents need to be. But it's my responsibility on my side for my relationship and how do I share with my family. 
Don't you think? Think it's both ways? Yes, it's both ways, right? And when these qualities, we use them, what we see starts happening in our life. We start experiencing a peace within, a lightness within, an easiness within. Because we're feeling contented. We're feeling as though I'm being nurtured and I'm being cared for and I have what I need. Tonight, it's a responsibility I took on to be here with all of you. But even though I have a not so pleasant throat, it's croaky. <laughs> I could have choose to say, well, you know, I can't. But I thought, no, the greatest pleasure for me is that I can still speak. The words can still be heard. And so I'm very grateful. I'm very appreciative. There is that feeling of being generous inside that what I have of these qualities, let me share it with my family. And all of you are my family. So it becomes a feeling of the responsibility or else if it, there wasn't this feeling of the responsibility what I could have easily done was to tell the team members, you know what? I'm not up to it. And so one of you just take over, even though I did say to my brothers, I said, if I can't make it through, please be on standby. So the responsibility works both ways, right? I'm not going to sit here and just cough. It wouldn't make sense, right? So the responsibility to all of you for how you've made your effort to be here tonight and you receiving something that will nurture your being, that you will go home feeling that you're being cared for. And that's also to be generous, to be you know, it's like this feeling that each one must have something, whether it's one point that you will remember that what is it that you are appreciating today in your life, even if that one awareness is there. It's like the eye begins to open and I can see the light. Because what I'm seeing, I'm seeing that which I didn't see before. I'm seeing that which will bring me joy to see, but I have it. You know, life could be like, you know, people have lots of jewelry and money. And where is it sitting? Where is all the jewelry sitting? In the bank. Oh, I have so many diamonds and jewelry and all of these beautiful things. But I can't wear them. Where is it all? It's kept in the bag. And so it feels like I don't have anything. And so we don't want to live life like this. We want to feel there is abundance. Everywhere. <clears throat> Sorry. Everywhere I look. There is abundance. We understand it. 
Ryan, we need volume. So, you might be a little confused. Um, but yes, I would be Sister Angelie's responsible brother. And so, uh, I'm going to continue on because we kind of knew that um, there might be a discontinuity. So, whatever she was talking about, I did not know exactly where she might be headed because it was her voice. And now you're going to hear a different voice. And we are still going to be engaging in that topic of gratitude, gra gratitude, responsibility. responsibility. Yes. There you go. And with that understanding, did have a thought. One of the things about our Thursday nights is that we have um, themes and we think about those. I do anyway. And we have that opportunity to consider what it might mean and what's is beneficial and how that would be. But when I think of responsibility, such as showing up as uh, required and requested, um, sometimes, and I want you to kind of go along with me if that's the case, it feels like a burden. I'm responsible. I'm the one who has to do things. I have to, you know, think about these things. And there's a lot in our lives that can make it very heavy. Does anybody have that feeling ever? I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to worry about this, I have to look after this, I don't know what time is the train, what's this, what's weather. Just, there's a lot of things that come into our life and we're responsible for. And sometimes it can feel very, very heavy. And in that moment, if you've ever had that, have you ever had the thought, gosh, you know, I wish I didn't have to think about so much. I wish I wasn't so responsible for all these things. I wish that I didn't feel this way. Anybody ever had that sense that, you know, I wish I was a little freer from all those responsibilities? And when we have that thought, then maybe we can move into another one. And we're thinking that if I wasn't responsible for things and play with that a little, if I wasn't responsible, if I didn't have to think about these things, how would I be? Lighter, freer, you know, easier. Does that make some sense? And so that's often um, a nice thought when we are holding on to responsibilities. But it can also go another path, another direction. There can be this opportunity that we might not have any responsibilities and we might not therefore be in charge. And we might not be able to have any influence in our life. We might not be the one who makes decisions. Maybe you've been in that situation where you don't have any responsibility, but you don't have any power in your own life. Do this, do this, don't do that, stop this, what's wrong? You're not responsible, but you're not also in charge. And that's a different feeling also. So we can be heavy, and we can be free, and we can also be kind of subjugated if we don't take some responsibility. And so my thinking right now, and just want to bounce this off of you, is the reason we have gratitude for responsibility is it's an opportunity to get involved in making the decisions in our own life. And it's actually quite something to be able to recognize, um, and I hope this is the case for all of you or most of you, you have a chance to consider what it is that you want to do. You can make a decision about that for yourself and that you have that opportunity. And when you have an opportunity to do something, um, walk down the street, come here, however it's going to be, have some friends, um, that's the sense of gratitude. And I want you to try that on, that feeling that I am grateful for the opportunity 
to be responsible for myself. That I am the one who does my thinking. I'm the one who can make some choices. Now, one of the other great things about this is that you are responsible, but you're not alone. I'm hoping that you have friends, family, um, mentors, teachers that will help you making those decisions and that you can be grateful for that influence in your life also. That there are those around me who might know more, have different experiences, have a different um, perspective, bring a different facet to an issue, and therefore I'm responsible but I don't have to have that heaviness that I have to worry about so many things, that there's a relationship that grows. And I think that's one of the nice things about our theme this month is an appreciation for the relationships that we can have and how those can help out. Simply tonight, um, a small team here. Um, it used to be a little more abundant we used to do things a little differently covid kind of knocked things out there's more on zoom than there are in the hall but it's great to see all of you here frankly um i hope you like getting out i hope the dark doesn't stop you from these things and um in that sense that there's someone to open the door there's someone to prepare a blessing in a toy there's someone to um turn the lights on and fix the, the screens and the sounds there's someone to host you there's someone to talk there's someone come and listen, be a participant, to engage with that. And so one of the things about playing our role and being responsible is that we get to participate in our own life. We get to participate with others. We get to do something that is greater than just what we can do by ourselves. Is anybody... Um, oh, we're talking about uh, the show. Has anybody ever been in a a play, a show, theater, some sort of a performance? Some? Okay. Um, I want you to try that if you're, you know, uh, community theater or school or anything. Because what's great about it to me, I had a chance to do that a long time ago, is that there is a vision, there is a goal, there's a beginning, there's an end, and there's a lot of combined energy. You can't do it yourself. But when you can create or be a part of something that you have put something to and as a result, it's quite a magical feeling. Um, I've talked to um, tradesmen, okay? And when they build a building or a wall or, you know, even doing some pavement in the, the street, when you do a nice job with other people and you can create something like that, the, the feeling um, is something you can't get alone. You can do create things. But that sense that I am responsible for myself, but let me work together and appreciate what it is that can be done when there's a team, when there's more than that. And so sometimes a team is a family, sometimes it's your friends, whatever it might be. But that ability to recognize what I can do, what I'm supposed to do, and what I've kind of signed up to do, and the understanding that it's wonderful that I actually have a chance to do that. I have a chance to experience that directly. And I guess that's why it's so nice to have uh, all of you here tonight, because um, the ability to be in this space, the ability to um, be with others and make that connection um, is unique and special in any way, in any kind of case um, that we can do that. One of the aspects about responsibility that comes up uh, often in our classes and our meditation is that when you are responsible, you have power. When you don't take responsibility, you're letting somebody else have that influence for you. And sometimes it's easier. Um, I was quite happy, I had to take a trip uh, recently. I was quite happy that I wasn't responsible for flying the plane. 
Okay, it's just like, you know, you do that, that's good. It's it's important to know when to delegate things. You know, glad I don't know, where's this go, how's this, why is this? Too much. I don't, I don't want to be responsible for everything. I do want to be responsible more for myself. And if I can understand that responsibility gives me some sort of power in decision-making, what comes up from that is oftentimes our actions. And there's a sense that um, when we perform an action, we get a result. You know, as you plant, so you reap, law of karma, all those things are part of that. And when we have that understanding that when I perform an action, there's a result, and I choose to be responsible for that, I can be very grateful that I have the ability to affect the outcome of my life the way I want it to be. Now, I don't always control all my circumstances, but one of the main things that I do control, or I can control, or I have the ability to practice and begin to control, is how I do things. Do I want to do things in an elevated manner? in a joyful way, in a miserable way, in a complaining way. How do I want to be and how do I want to do whatever I'm going to do? Because that's my choice. And whether you know it or not, um, it's a practice. I need to practice how I want to be so that I have the ability to be responsible for the outcomes. We talk about some of the dynamics of that, that if you aren't responsible, if you don't take, um, you know, your own actions uh, under your own care, um, and you don't do anything different, whatever you've been experiencing, whatever you've been feeling, is going to be your future. Law of, um, second law, some physics that... A body at rest stays at rest. A body in motion stays in motion until an outside force. And so if you're thinking in a certain way and you don't do anything different, you're going to think in a certain way, you're going to act in a certain way, and you're going to get the same results. So if you're not happy and you look around and you see things that um, you can find unhappiness within and you practice being unhappy, you can kind of figure out that you're responsible for the unhappiness that's going to come to you in the future. You're connected to your own life. Big lesson. Very important thing to understand. And somehow you are connected to your own life. You are involved with that. And if you can recognize that, then be grateful that you're responsible because then you can change. How do I want to be? What do I want um, there's lots of things that are going on in the world, but rarely does it come up that there's a conversation about how do you want to experience your life? How do you want to be? Not what do you want to be, but how do you want to be? There's a great little story of a teacher. I think it was Louise um, who was running class one time, and she was asking her kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? And there was a, a variety of answers. And one little girl said, I want to be a fireman. Said, cool. All right. Another one. What do you want to be? I want to be a doctor. Like, That's great. And uh, what do you want to be? I want to be assistant manager at Coles. Oh, that's pretty cool. Nice. And what do you want to be? And this one said, I want to be happy. Teacher said, I don't think you understand the question. And the kid said, I don't think you understand life. Interesting exchange, wasn't that you, Louise? That... <laughs> Maybe you were the kid, not the teacher. I forget the story. But it's it's a wonderful um, understanding of, you know, what are we actually doing and what are we thinking we're doing? And are we happy, content, grateful for the chance to actually choose, wake up? and 
understand how we're going to be. How do I want to be? And one of the consequences, it's not without its um, repercussions, but one of the consequences of being responsible, how many want how many want to be happy? Let me back up, start at the beginning. Does anybody feel that that would be something that is valuable in their life? Nobody's raising their hand. Okay, that's fine. All right. Now, one happy person, too, you know. This isn't easy, this, you know. But, you know, if, if you didn't raise your hand immediately, saying, yeah, I want to be happy. Maybe you are happy, and so it was like, oh, I have too much happiness. Or, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm happy enough. Um, or think about that question. What do you really want? How do you want to be? How do you want to experience things? And it's not just if you choose happiness, you don't get peace or contentment or something like that. They're all kind of bundled together. But if that's how you want to be, and if that's important, and that's what we would choose, then we should be grateful that we have the opportunity to make that decision. And when we make that decision, this is what I want, and I will be responsible for that. Then you either get lighter or freer, or maybe a little uncomfortable. Because what happens when you choose to be responsible and engaged in your own life and have a sense that this is what I want, and the results of that are you can't blame anybody else. I'm responsible for how I feel. I will take the credit for that. I will choose. I will do my best. But I can't blame anybody else if it doesn't happen. It's not your fault that I'm not happy. You just totally gave away your responsibility, your power, your influence in your own life. You did this, but how am I going to respond? How am I going to be? How am I going to follow that up? What am I going to choose? And it's quite a challenge. And sometimes it's hard for us to, to defend that, but you are free to choose how you want, no matter what the circumstances are. And there's a lot of circumstances out there that aren't providing happiness. Does that make sense? There are things that are going on that might have you easily choose a different way of thinking and be feeling. But our intent and our practice, you know, in meditation and an awareness of the thoughts that we create is these are my thoughts. These are the thoughts that create my feelings. These are the creative thoughts that create my experience. These are the thoughts that I want to have. Let me be responsible. Let me choose those. And I am very grateful that I'm able to understand that and that I'm able to be aware of all of those. Am I getting a signal that... Uh, I have a few chats that I thought have a few one chats. of them is kind of appropriate to what you're talking about now. So we're going to just segue a little from um, ongoing stuff into comments from the Zoom land and from here. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm hoping that there are things that have been said and it sounds like there's been something that others might talk something. about. Well, we started with a comment, no name, saying, this is beautiful. And another one a while back also, any, oh, well, that's me. And it said, how profoundly beautiful. And then there's the comment, the happiness which comes from material things from outside is temporary. Would you like to discuss that? Um, it's temporary, but it's kind of nice to have a, a hat and a coat when it's winter, you know? And I'm temporarily happy for that. Um, you know, um, it, that would be the case, but um, balancing things is, is pretty important. Um, you're going to make decisions in your life, but there are other factors in your life that others are going to decide upon too. And um, I have found that um, money and housing and food have been very handy things to have in my life. So free advice, you know, check it out. Now, I've also, and this is personal, find that too much stuff is a burden. 
what about this? And I have to think about this. And no, I didn't check the oil on the car. And what about the, where's the lights? You know, too many things to think about. And I don't have any servants, so that's maybe the issue. Um, but too many things to think about is, is a burden. If I'm responsible, then I'm in that kind of heaviness place. And if I can't find anybody to delegate it to, then it's, you know, kind of wears on me. So I kind of like to have some things, but not too many things in that sense. So yeah, winter, winter's coming, get a coat, okay? And a hat, and scarf, and, you know, they don't have to be um, alpaca, wool, they can just, whatever you want. So are there other comments? How about those in the hall? Anything spark in your mind? Any comments or questions or what do you do? Okay. in the back? One second. Can you just comment on what you think the connection is between between being grateful and choosing what you want? The connection between being grateful and choosing what you want. Um, sometimes it might be considered free will or the ability to choose. And I have to confess that I'm not very um, experienced in other cultures' um, ways of living. Okay. Um, I've been, I grew up in the United States. This is the country that um, I know, but I have met others and um, the Harmony House, um, Raja Yoga Meditation, part of the Brahma Kumaris is an organization worldwide headquartered in India and get a chance to go there and talk to some. And to illustrate this maybe, uh, talk to individuals in certain countries um, and this um, gathering in other countries is illegal, more than five people. And this gathering in some other countries um, is, you know, suspect. And there's a variety of ways of organizing. And so that makes me feel um, that the, the freedom to choose to come to something to talk about um, a spiritual uh, topic um, is quite special. And I've learned that more through conversation than living in an oppressive uh, situation. Uh, there's lots of circumstances in the world which are horrific all around the world. Probably some within a mile of here also, I don't know. But I have the ability to evaluate. And so with that free will, free choice, um, I'm quite grateful, uh, truly, in, in that um, ability, because I don't think everybody has the same amount of that throughout the world. And to be able to assume that this is a gift that the world owes me, um, is kind of a big mistake in my mind. And so to be grateful, actually, um, if you want to do something wonderful, it might rain this weekend if you're at home, turn off everything. And then just start that list. What, what are you really grateful for? What is there that, you know, is it the air? Is it the food? Is it the friendship? Is it that you have a piece of paper and a pen that you can write something down? I mean, every, every little thing that's in your life, um, it's kind of a miracle. And so to have that, um, that kind of perspective and feeling, um, for me, there's a, a energetic power it comes from noticing and appreciating and having that experience. So I don't know if that's specifically addressed that, but um, having free will and the responsibility uh, to exercise that. Um, if you don't use it, um, it's sad. I respect that. So let's not be sad. <laughs> we wanted to be happy like that little kid, right? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Only one person raised their hand to be happy. So I don't hear any coughing. And that's kind of a good sign. Because if it would be okay with all of you, hey, come on. If it would be okay, can I invite you back up for a meditation? 
Is that okay? I'll try it. Okay. And next week we're going to inhale gratitude and exhale bless. No, inhale blessings and exhale gratitude. So do come. Um, don't get confused um, because we're a tag team. This isn't wrestling, okay? But we are going to take turns kind of uh, sharing some things. So Sister Anthony, I believe you're coming back. Um, someone, some people have asked, when is our next uh, course? The beginner's we course? We will send out okay. very soon. Thank you both very, very much. Beautiful tag team. So forever grateful. And the experience of responsibility on the team, right? Responsibility to pick up. And I have the feeling to express my gratitude to Brother Eric for just a minute, second notice to just say, okay, I'll jump in for you. And so in life, all of us goes through different, different scenes throughout the day. When we leave today, let's observe our lives, what we have and really tell everything that how grateful you are. You might say, okay, here is this microphone. If I say to this microphone, I'm so grateful that I can speak through this, that everyone in this hall can hear me. Do you know from the person who created this, invented it, to me using it, do you know, it's like expressing good wishes and blessings to that, to everything. They always say that you take care of the things around you and they last longer. If you hit them around and you do certain things, you know, you don't treat it nicely, what happens? It will not serve you. People have cars for many, many, many years. And they continue to drive those cars. And some could just have new cars and then what happens in no time? So there are certain qualities that really ties in together. And so just to conclude on that is the gratitude that I have myself, when I have that, when I see that, when I live with it, it's easy for it to take expression in my life with others. If not, I'm living for myself. I'm only living for me. But am I living in this world for myself or am I living to give? So that's the responsibility. The responsibility is that I'm not living for myself. The responsibility is that I have. I have a beautiful mind that it can create beautiful thoughts. Let me share these thoughts with the world. I can speak and I can speak beautiful words, uplifting words, inspiring words to make, create shifts in people's lives from where they are in a life of sorrow or unhappiness or whatever, to a place of comfort, to a place of that is rewarding for them. Our hands, our feet, our wealth. I'm not holding my wealth only for when I leave the body, someone is going to do a big ceremony and donate my wealth. No, use it while you're in your body. Feel, express that feeling that when I serve with this, look, everyone becomes happy who receives something. So it's this whole thing of gratitude for what I have, but the experience of sharing that with humanity in every way possible it's that feeling that is. And then God in our lives, you know, what God gives to us. Can we live our lives really? I ask myself this question. 
Can I go through life without God? And the answer is no. I don't want to be separated. I don't want to feel disconnected. Because if I disconnect from God, it means I will connect somewhere else. We are either connected or disconnected. And whatever it is that I'm connected to will bring me happiness, bring me sorrow, bring me joy, bring me unpleasant, whatever it is, maybe. This is why I would really share with everyone with a humble heart, whatever is happening in the world to our world family, spend your time in giving. Everyone needs our pure feelings our good wishes. Today is not about right and wrong. Today is about giving. When I give, whoever is in need will receive. And this is why the safest place to be, stay under God's light, God's might. Because the more I look at that supreme, and I see that supreme light, that supreme being. I always say, how do you see the world? You tell me how you're seeing the world. And what answer do you think I will get? My world, my children, my family. So if it's God's world, God's family, God's children, can I learn to see? As we speak about this feeling, of brotherhood, and I feel that's my responsibility. My responsibility is to see how my world family can experience God's love and the love that he fills me with. So let's have a few minutes of meditation. Meditation is basically, you can see it in different ways. It's my conversation with myself. It's a conversation with God. It's sending pure thoughts and feelings to myself, to the world, to everyone. So let's become aware of the thoughts I'm creating right now. And they are very beautiful thoughts for myself. That in my inner world, there is peace. And I am aware of this peace. I am aware of love. I am aware that how grateful I am. That each one of you are present here this evening. Whether you're present physically. Or you're present even on the Zoom. It's that presence to pick up something, to receive something, that the being, the soul, will take away to experience peace, to see the beauty in one's own life, to see the abundance that's there. It is so full, but I need to see it. I need to become aware. And so I'm aware that I have the power to create these beautiful thoughts. I am aware that I have the power to create the experiences in my life the experience of sharing good wishes to everyone, the whole of humanity. See the self beyond in an airplane that can go past the sky and you look down on planet Earth and you just share loving feelings to every soul. 
I go beyond country, nationality, language. I go beyond all the noise of the world. And all I hear in this place of silence, in this space beyond, it is like the silence of love, of giving, of sharing. So the light spreads across the world. And this is the feeling of responsibility to the self and to the world. Let me give what I have. Let me share with the world so that they can also become aware that they have what they're looking for. They have that peace. They have that love. It is only what I have in my heart touches everyone to awaken their qualities. So keep on sharing, receiving and giving, becoming aware and seeing my responsibility. Oh, Shanti. Om is a greeting we use, and Shanti means to be peaceful. So Om Shanti. I am a peaceful soul. So may you all stay very, very peaceful. When it's too noisy here, see yourself above the world in a place that has no noise and that space will pull you out of all the noise but make the effort to go beyond I made it through thank you so next week program you will be nice yes Mr. Sandra and we're talking about as I said what did I say? Anyway, come anyway. I'll surprise you with it. Thank you so much for your beautiful, beautiful presence. And we're so happy we could hear you. And Brother Eric, thank you also. Uh, anyone comment before we say goodnight? It's 8 o'clock. Okay. Come back if you like. And we promise peace. Have a tolly, a blessing if you like, uh, on the way in. And so, if you would like to join our email, we have that. Also. Yes, so that you can receive the information for our one is what happened Thursday night, but next week, Sunday, will be our Diwali program for the public, for the public, for everyone. Okay. And that would be from 3 to 5 p.m. 3 to 5. And you would really enjoy the experience. So those who are here for the first time and you want to receive emails, you can, Sister Louise will help you in the front. Absolutely. Goodbye, Bye. Zoomers. See you next week. <laughs> Om Shanti. Okay, Om Shanti.